Hi, um, today we're going to begin our exploration of U.S. history. This is the text we're going to be using. Um, and we're going to start off today with chapter one um, and give you a little preview of what's in this book. Okay? So, so chapter one basically deals with um, colonial America, the revolution, and the writing of the Constitution. Um, and, and so what you'll find in this chapter is, is you know, just a little bit on coming to the new world, um, uh, a treatment of folks already here, why people came over here, um, uh, you know, the, the great Thanksgiving we have with the pilgrims. Um, uh, the pilgrims came here for religious freedom for themselves, not for others. Um, if you were a different faith, um, uh, they booted you out of the colony. Uh, Rhode Island and New Hampshire were started by people who were boot booted out of, of, of Massachusetts Bay Colony uh, for, because they developed different religious ideas. Uh, in, the, in the middle colonies, for example, um, Jamestown in Virginia was started as a money-making colony. Um, down south, uh, Georgia, they were looking to get rid of uh, poor people who couldn't pay their debts in England, so they started Georgia. Uh, so, so each colony has its unique history, um, and they were started for different reasons, but as England gained control of, of the 13 colonies, uh, uh, every, every colony developed their own governmental system uh, and, and so you started to have um, complaints about the British not paying attention to the colonial governments. And it, it, in fact, uh, it got so bad that we didn't feel like we were, our, our legis colonial legislatures were being heard at all. Um, you know, if, we, if you wanted to write a letter to the king, let's say you, you had a complaint, how long do you think it would take for you to get a reply? Now remember, this is horse and buggy days. This is not, you know, pick up the phone and, and call someone far away. So what you would do, let's say you lived in Springfield, Massachusetts, you would, you would write your letter, okay, and then you got to get it to the port. So you give your letter to somebody going to Boston, all right? And so he's on horseback, and he's going, you know, and it takes him, I don't know, a couple weeks to get to Boston. And then he needs to find a ship going to London. So he goes out with your letter and with other letters, and he goes to the seaport, and he finds a ship captain going to London, but he's not going directly. He's going to New York first. Okay, well, that's the best we're going to do. So they, they give it to the ship captain, and uh, he goes to New York, you know, picks up more, more goods, and then he goes his, on his way to London. Now, how long does it take for a boat to get to London? Let's say they're doing well, maybe a month, maybe a month and a half, and, and so it arrives in London, all right? And let's say, you know, then they look at the mail and they give it to, to the courier who takes it up to the king, and so they open it up and, you know, they put it at the bottom of the pile because, you know, you're just some schmo. Okay, so couple months go by and they finally get to your letter and the guy reads it. Now the king's not reading it. It's one of the ministers. And he looks at it and says, no. Send it back. Right? So, so he gives it to a courier and let's say uh, uh, you know, they, they take it immediately to, to, the, to the port and, and let's say a, a ship captain happens to be going to Boston that day and, and they take off, another month goes by and then they get to the port and then they got to find a guy going out to Springfield, Massachusetts. So, so, you know, I mean, this whole thing could take four months, it could take six months to get a reply. You may never get a reply because in all those places, um, your letter could get lost, 
right? And so if England is six months away from hearing complaints of its citizens, that's a problem. And that's one of the problems that was facing America on the dawn of the Revolutionary War. And the question was, what gives you the right to rule over me? And so as you go through this, that will be a central question. And so um, as, as colonials, colonialists um, start to answer that question and then create a revolution and then create a constitution and get that constitution approved, because that constitution was then sent out to all the states and the people had to vote on whether or not they wanted to be governed by that document. It was an extraordinary couple decades. So anyway, that's what you're gonna read about um, in chapter one. So I hope you enjoy it and good luck.